Star Trek Picard Season 3. Uh, did just air yesterday. Uh, just finished last night. Uh, I did watch it. Actually, technically I watched it sort of Thursday morning. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so, my thoughts on it. It is definitely better than the first two seasons. Um, for sure. No question there. Definitely better than the first two seasons. Um, but, I mean, the second season in particular was not very well received. Uh, this season was definitely much better received than the first two. I'm not sure. My opinion on it is does not seem to be in line with what uh, most people think thought of it. And I suspect a lot of that comes down to uh, my own biases. I feel that it still relies extremely heavily on nostalgia. It draws very heavily on nostalgia. References to sort of classic references to the next generation that are made just to have the reference. I feel like there's there was still a lot of that going on, which in some cases ended up drawing me out of the story. Um, for example, the uh, there was a cameo from Professor Moriarty in one episode that was handled in a way that just did not it just ended up sucking the fun out of that cameo the way it was done um the main villain felt like a bit of a step backwards um I don't know, there were just... It's always been a series. The second and third seasons in particular. It, honestly, the first season wasn't as bad for it, but the second and third seasons were really bad for this. For just being, hey, remember this? From the next generation? Remember this moment? Remember this line? Um, a lot of callbacks, which, again, I'm not a fan of nostalgia. I don't like nostalgia as an emotion. Um, so that, I didn't really like. That said, uh, there was still a lot of good about it. Um, it did a really good job handling themes of family and legacy. Uh, those were, you know, it was, did a really good job with uh, handling those themes, making them prominent, making them really major elements throughout the, the season. Um, I did really like the new cast that was brought in for the, uh, the crew of the USS Titan. Um, obviously the returning cast is good. Jerry Ryan, great. Michelle Hurd, great. Um, I really liked the crew of the, the USS Titan. Uh, Captain Shaw was so much fun. Loved Captain Shaw. <laughs> and, uh, LaForge's two daughters. Uh, they were, yeah, it was cool seeing them. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, the crew of the USS Titan was just really fun to, to see. Um. I hope that they stick around. Uh, so like, I really do hope that we get Star Trek Legacy. I do really want Star Trek Legacy as a show. 
following the crew of the Titan. Um, you know, I'm bringing back the uh, the crew we saw here, particularly Sydney LaForge, the uh, Jordy's daughter who was pilot on the Titan. Um, definitely need more of her. Interesting. The one character that uh, I wouldn't necessarily need to see. Jack Crusher. He was good. Like, don't get me wrong. He was good. Uh, I liked Jack Crusher. My concern with him carrying on to, like, a Star Trek legacy, uh, a new series, he's the kind of character... where it's easy to write him sort of dominating the plot, and I would much prefer a more ensemble-focused cast, and I feel like Jack Jack Crusher, if he's sort of there, he, he might draw a lot of focus. But, whatever. Um, speaking of Crushers, Gates McFadden, Gates McFadden as Beverly Crusher, She's still really good looking. She looks great. Like, really nice. Like, I really liked her hair. <laughs> like, of all things. Uh, that little bit of white in her hair. That white streak in her hair. It looks really good. She looks really good with, uh, with, the, uh, with the gray hair. It works for her. Um, Michael Dorn back as Worf, he was good. Uh, Michael Dorn uh, did a really good job as an older and wiser Worf. Um, LeBar Burton as a Geordi who wor who's worried about his kids. Uh, Amanda Plummer was excellent as just this, you know, hammy scene stealing, uh, eating the scenery role. What's, uh, what I, what is interesting about it, something that was announced, like, something that I saw people pointing out before the season even started, like from like early trailers for Picard season three. Uh, so Amanda Plummer is of course the daughter of Christopher Plummer. Uh, phenomenal actor. Uh, he played one of the main villains in Star Trek VI. Uh, the Undiscovered Country, the final adventure of the original Star Trek cast, uh, which, you know, was actually a pretty good movie. Um, so yeah, he played the, uh, one of the villains in the last adventure of the original Star Trek cast. Uh, his daughter, Amanda Plummer, played one of the villains in the final adventure of of the Next Generation cast, which is just really cool uh, bit of symmetry right there. Um, so, I suppose if she's got any kids, they'll need to get ready to play uh, the villain in any Deep Space Nine uh movie or reunion or whatever but um but anyway yeah she was really good she was clearly having a fun time uh like she was very clearly just having an absolute blast um just chewing the scenery all over the place uh which made her just a thoroughly enjoyable villain uh there were a couple of really cool um couple of other really cool appearance uh, cameos there, here and there. Uh, Michelle Forbes coming back as uh, Ro Laren. That was uh, interesting to see. 
Um, Tim Russ showing up as Tuvok. Uh, Elizabeth Dennehy showing up as uh, Shelby from the uh, the Best of Both Worlds two-parter of Next Generation. It was neat seeing her appear again. And uh, there was also a voice cameo from Walter Koenig. Uh, voicing Earth President Anton Chekhov. With, you know, Anton presumably being a reference to uh, the other guy who played uh, Chekhov um, in the uh, the movies. Anton... Oh, I'm blanking on uh, that guy's name. Uh, Anton Yelchin. So yeah, presumably Anton as a uh, reference to Anton Yelchin, who played Chekhov in the... Uh, the reboot movies, and uh, you know, I assume Anton Chekhov is supposed to be like the son or he was the son or grandfather, son or grandson, I forget which, of uh, Pavel Chekhov, grandson I think of Pavel Chekhov, uh, and yeah, I mean that's just like a really cool voice cameo right there. And I'm sort of on the fence about playing this, but I mean, it's, I suppose, worth a minor spoiler. We do get to hear uh, Magel Barrett's voice. There is a moment where, uh, you know, where her voice is heard as the voice of an old computer. And uh, with Riker mentioning that he's missed that voice. And we all have. I think we've all missed Matt Gilbert's voice. It's, uh, you know, she was the voice of the Enterprise. And, you know, a lot of other, she was, she was the voice of Star Trek to, uh, to a big extent, so. That was a really nice uh, homage to her, I thought. The little bit about missing her voice. Um, yeah, so I mean, the the overall plot was you know, reasonably compelling. Lots of mysteries and twists and turns and revelations and so on. Fate of the Galaxy and all that. Um, so. All. Pretty. Pretty decent. Uh, we'll leave one more complaint. There is a stinger. Sort of a. Uh, So the final credits for the cast, at least, like cast credits, play a really great, it's a really nice scene. Oh, the final scene, the final scene of the uh, series where the one that's there when the, uh, that leads into the, the credits of who was in the show, um, it was really nice. Uh, but afterwards, there is a stinger, a post credit scene. I did not like. Uh, again, I suspect I may end up being in the minority on this, but I did not like the stinger, the post credit scene. I do not approve of it, and I hope that it's not something that gets picked up in a uh, potential Star Trek Legacy series. Um... Or if it does, I hope they at least do it in a way Yeah, 
I hope they at least make some changes before they would uh, before they uh, pick it up. Again, no spoilers or anything. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's... It's a season that was very much a love letter to the next generation, um, which is the series that I grew up on. That is... That is, in many ways, my Star Trek, was Next Generation. Um, so, I mean, there were definitely a lot of moments that were definitely designed to sort of pluck at the old heartstrings. Very memorable moment when once all the, uh, the Next Generation cast has been reunited and they're sitting down for a briefing and... One of them mentioned, so it's been a long time since they've all got sat around a table like that. And it's like, man, yeah, those were the days. Uh, so yeah, a lot of bits like that where it's... It's definitely evoking feelings um, of nostalgia. But I have object... But I have issues with nostalgia. I'm not... That is a personal uh, feeling of mine. Most people do enjoy nostalgia. Most people uh, love getting nostalgic. Um, I just have... I just don't like nostalgia. <laughs> That's just me. Um, that said, like I said, it's... Uh, It's definitely a solid season. Definitely better than the first two, for sure. Um, it is definitely some good, some pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff. Um, all that said, I am very excited for the new season of Strange New Worlds. Uh, I believe that's the next uh, the next Star Trek to come out will be Season 2 of Strange New Worlds. Uh, and, you know, excited for final season of Discovery, excited for... I think Lower Decks is going to be coming back and for at least one more season, maybe even two. So, yeah. Very much looking forward to season two of Strange New Worlds, uh, which I think will only be ten episodes, which is a shame because <laughs> that is a show that I would absolutely watch uh, a 26 episode season. But sadly, I don't think we'd be getting that. Um, so yeah, it's like June that we get uh, season two of Strange New Worlds. Sadly, only ten episodes of that. But we have gotten a trailer for it, and uh, the trailer definitely looks uh, really fun. A uh, really good trailer, so. Like I said, looking forward to that. Um, as for Star Trek Picard, truthfully, I'm not sorry to see the series end. It never really, it's, I still, even after this season, I still think that it is overall the weakest of the modern era of Star Trek shows. And maybe one of the weakest Star Trek shows, period. All in all. But like I said, that's my opinion, and uh, I know from what I've seen, most people seem to dis disagree with me as far as this season of Picard goes. Most people seem to have much more positive feelings towards it than I did. Well, it's not for nothing. It was a very action... It was a very action-oriented season as well. There was still plenty of character drama, but... Definitely very action-heavy. 
even by modern track standards. I don't know. But whatever. Uh, so that's my thoughts on Star Trek Picard Season 3. And, uh, so thanks for watching. And I'll see you in another video.